Are you aware we are told to fear in the Word of God? This past week, I became aware of a scripture. I've read the Bible through many times, but there are times when you're reading the Word and suddenly something comes out off the page to you like it never has before. And as I was reading the Word this week, I came to, and, and I was hearing others speak also, but I came to Hebrews 4, 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear, lest any of us seem to have come short of it. We are to have fear if we're coming short of his rest. How many of you have ever gone through life and thinking you're all harried and you're, you're stressed out in everything and that you had no fear about that other than the situation you were in at the moment and you were wanting it to get done and you were doing everything in your might to do it and you had no idea that you were coming short of the rest of God and something he told us to fear about. I have come to understand that most of my life I have lived that way. I've been stressed. I've pushed myself to the max. I've gone and done because it was the right thing to do. Not hearing from God, not having God say, this is the way walk ye in it, because I could do it myself. But I believe that God designed for our lives to be in right rest. I believe that's part of our destiny in God, that when situations come, no matter what the situation is, we are able to find rest in God, knowing that he is on the throne and he is in charge of it all. I believe when we don't enter into his rest, we are believing that we can do it better and we've got to get on with it. As I see it, we do not rest in the Holy Spirit to accomplish things in our lives, but we think that we can do it on our own. And then we are told, well, you do what you can do and then God will do the rest. How many have ever heard that? We've been steeped in that kind of a tradition. And if we don't do something when there's a situation there, we feel lazy or we feel like we're not living up to what we should. We feel like we're not uh, being responsible. Any of the, you feel any of that? But we go about doing our part and not resting in the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, we set the Holy Spirit aside to do our work. Jesus lived his entire life doing what he saw his father do and saying what he heard his father say. He only did that after he had seen the father do and say, and then Jesus spoke or did. So many of us are in the ministry of busyness. My husband used to have a plaque on his wall that said, beware of the barrenness of the busy life. Somehow in this day and age, we are more guided by need than we are by the Holy Spirit. Not understanding if there's a need there, God may have someone else he's put on their heart to take care of that need, but we see the need and we rush in to do and to be. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for no thing. The word says nothing, but it translates to no thing. Be anxious for no thing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses 
all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I believe we're being told there, you pray, you ask God earnestly for your situation, and then you start giving thanksgiving. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can trust the Holy Spirit. We thank him because it is done. God is involved with every one of our situations, and then we can start moving in a peace that passes all understanding. If we allow God, to let his peace reign in our his heart. John 14, 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. You, that word let is a causative word. You let the word of God dwell in your heart and you let not your heart be troubled. You allow your heart not to be troubled. God is not going to come down and untrouble your heart. It's up to you. So let not, you let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Hebrews 4 verse 9. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered into his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Remember how God created the earth. For six days he worked, and then on the seventh day he created a day of rest. Our rest is to come through the midst of all the seven days. He created man, and the first day, and the first thing man knew was rest as they came into that next day. Colossians 3.15, and let, you let, the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. You can say, but Dr. Jean, I don't know how to do that. Allow me to help you, and allow me to tell you where it starts. It starts in the mind. Everything comes from the mind. Our fears, our doubts, our depressions, it's how we're thinking. Are we lined up with the word of the Lord or are we doing our own works in our own way? 1 Peter 1.13, therefore gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. God doesn't say he's going to be the one that's going to gird up the loins of your mind. You've got to do it. It's another one of those areas. It is one of the areas that you can call those things which are high and which are lifted up and which take preeminence in your mind, and you call them down in the name of the Lord. When the mind's at work and a situation arises, what's the first question that arises? What if? What if? And isn't it amazing how our answer with the question, what if, is generally negative? God wants us to turn that from what if to the negative to what if to the positive that lines up with the word of God. Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I believe resting in God is part of the perfect will of God. The word goes on to talk about uh, that you're not thinking more of yourself than you ought. I want you to know that as you transform your mind into resting in God, you will be so overwhelmed by the, the majesty and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't think more highly of yourself than you ought. You will be thinking of God. You will be thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be resting in the work of the Holy Spirit because you will understand that he is at work in your life and you can rest in the outcome with the Lord Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is that we won't think more highly when we think more highly as we th than we ought. I used to think that was comparing myself with other people. 
But I've come to realize in the last few hours, the Lord has just placed in my heart. It's when we're doing our own works that we're thinking ourselves more highly than of God. We're putting on ourselves a position instead of doing the work of the Lord and only doing those things that he's leading us to do. We enter into our works and we're thinking we can do better than waiting on the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, you will come into such peace with God. You will come into such rest with God. You'll be overwhelmed with Jesus. I've never been more in love with Jesus than I am today. The more I explore his rest, the more I come to love him. Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not, there's that word again, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Praise God. Today, I let not my heart be troubled. Today, we are hearing of disasters all around our world. We're hearing of financial disasters. We're hearing of killings. Right now, even, there's a killer on the loose, many killers, I'm sure, throughout the United States. But one in particular has a $1 million bounty on his head. And we're seeing all kinds of evil things progress. We're seeing wars and hearing of rumors of wars. We're hearing of earthquakes in diverse places. We're hearing all kinds of things that could bring fear to our hearts. But the word says, rest. Let us labor to enter into his rest. The word in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. How many of you understand that when we're doing our works, we are weary and we are heavy laden? And the word goes on to say, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am persuaded to think there that if we're involved in anything in our lives and the yoke is hard, and the burden is heavy. We are involved in our own works. I hear so many people say, I am so weary. Oh, if I could take a break. And many of them are church people involved in, quote, the work of the church. It's time for us to rest in God and trust the Holy Spirit and let him do the work. And it's time for us to resign from the office of being the Holy Spirit. I have done that so much through my life. I look back and I see where I wasn't content to rest and wait. It had to be done on my time schedule and therefore my yoke was uh, hard and my burden was heavy. But I want you to know I'm coming, I am coming. I haven't fully arrived. I am coming to a place where his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I have determined to enter his rest. I may miss it this morning, but I will try it again this afternoon. I may miss it again tomorrow, but I'm going to try it the day after. I'm going to continue to labor to enter into his rest that I might find peace for my soul, peace for my spirit, because I want his rest to be first nature with me, not even second nature. But we've got to retrain our minds. Our minds have got to be renewed in the word of God. Our work is from the world. We're conformed so much to the world's way of working and we're so conformed to the world's way of thinking. What is success? That we work and work and work and labor and labor and labor and come home exhausted. 
Where is his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I pray that today, as you have heard this word, I pray the revelation of the Holy Spirit becomes your portion. I pray in the name of Jesus that you're able to let go of yokes and burdens that God hasn't given you. I pray for peace and for rest in your spirit. I pray for you to have a revelation of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you to have a revelation of Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus said, it is finished. And he went to see, sit at the right hand of God the Father. I pray for you today. I bless you today. I glorify the Lord God who lives in you. And for those of you that may not know him, I want you to know he is ready to hear your prayer. He is ready for you to repent. Repent is a 180 degree turn from the direction you were walking. You're walking one way, but you turn and you walk exactly the opposite. And you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray his blessings upon you today as you rest in him. God bless you.